right. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to do a bit of gelt sciencing. I was going to do it offline, but then I thought um, I thought you guys would probably be interested as well. So, um, and uh, and you might be able to give me a few ideas and give me some help as well. So the um, so I've, I've linked a I've linked a video there that I did on the new gelt start, the update five point zero, um, and I kind of went through everything about how gelt's new mechanics work, his new mages, colleges of wizards, um, <clears throat> colleges of wizards um, mechanic, and all that. But um, I didn't really focus that much on his new start dilemmas. So that's what I want to just do a quick stream investigation of now. Um, yeah, so Gelt's got access to the Colleges of Magic. His new mechanic allows recruitment of wizards and special campaign actions. We're going to be using that a lot. Um, he gets um, he gets Winds of Magic powers at plus five for each wizard or hero in an army for all armies. Um, that's on top of all the other extra Winds of Magic power that he gets. Uh, plus two recruitment rank for battle wizards, plus 25% experience for spellcasters, 20% reduction for lower metal spells for himself, and plus 20 own army. He doesn't get, I think he used to get a 50% upkeep reduction for wizard heroes, but he doesn't get that anymore, which is actually important because he has, a, you know, he can potentially get a crap ton of heroes. Um, uh, don't want any end game on for this one. Because we're just sciencing. We're just sciencing right now. Um, oh, I suppose we could. Yeah, whatever. No, we don't need any end game. That's fine. Oh, you can just trunch. You can just unt untick these up here to do it quicker. It's easier. Hey Samuel, yeah, that's um, that's exactly what I was thinking. So my initial plan, what I think I want to do is do the initial um, like eight, seven or eight turns or whatever, take all the settlements, but then stop short of taking the last one. So the last one we use is a Sac City to, to delay. Um, and then, yeah, and then sell all the other regions back to um, Xiaoming. Um, and then, or to someone, and then um, get more money. But um, ideally, we get the military alliance with Zhao Ming before we go back. Because when I played it normally, I didn't actually have the military alliance with Zhao Ming by the time I teleported back to the Empire. So we need to get a military access with Zhao Ming and ideally have already done some ally missions. So that basically, as soon as we go back, we can... Um, we can get his army to basically retake the settlement but yeah we probably what you want to what you want to do is abandon that starting settlement so that you can just like get one of his armies to just immediately Might take it mine to command. no that's it's actually kind of really cool you don't get any settlements when you go when you teleport back to the empire on turn eight you don't get any settlements um but you um actually i'll just quickly save it here So that we can just reload to restart it. Yeah. So I'll actually. Yeah, so let's for start. Actually, let's start off by setting the scene so you guys know what we're talking about here. Um, so I'll just reload my save on turn eight, where I where I'm just about to teleport back to the Empire, so you can see what we're like, what's what we're working towards. Yeah, his voice is croaky. My voice is croaky or your voice is croaky? My voice is probably a bit croaky. Oh wow, that's really good. I've got like an instant vegetable soup that me that Mrs. Mercy got me. But I put um but I put a big chicken stock cube in it. And now it's like this really nice chicken vegetable soup. I'm on liquid food now, so I can, so I can, so I don't have to stop streaming for as long. Um, do you think Empire should have received a new unit of Frontline? I think they miss it quite a lot. Well, um, I mean, I'd love to see Imperial Foot like dismounted Reichsguard. Um, they had them in um, the the Warhammer mod for. Um, they had them in the Warhammer mod for. Um, Medieval 2 and um, they were really cool so they were in full plate armor and you could get swordsmen or halberds um, but they yeah they were not on horses um, so they're pretty cool but I don't know at the same time I kind of like how the Empire's got their theme of like you know not having good infantry oh yeah so we I think we can sack this 
and yeah, you don't get the dilemma. So we can we can keep this last setup. So the the red um the burning wind nomads we've totally wiped them out. This is their last settlement. You start off over here, and then you take all the settlements. So as soon as I occupy this, I'll get the final dilemma. But we can actually just if we want to when we do the new run, if we want to delay this while we get organized, we can actually just keep sacking it to keep them keep them pinned down. And yeah, I want to get a military alliance with. I reckon we want to get a military alliance with him, and then. Maybe what we want to do is time it until, like, so maybe we would, like, um, gift him, like, gift him Village of the Tiger Men, but then, and then we'll, and then we'll wait till he's got an army, like, standing right next to this, and then we'll disband the Elemental Winds, then we'll do, then we'll finish it, teleport back, have his army immediately reconquer the tele and to, like borrow his army and have it immediately reconquer the Temple of the Elemental Winds. Actually, we'll borrow his army before we do it so that, oh no, actually we can't borrow it before because it might teleport his army. Yeah, I'm not sure how that would work. It might actually teleport his army. We'll check, we'll try and check that as well. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so yeah. So now if we just occupy it, so now we get the dilemma. So yeah, so it's kind of weird. I don't know why anyone would choose this one. You don't get anything out of it, and he, you just, he just hates you. <laughs> like, well, what's, what's that about? Um, but yeah, so you can, you're basically going to choose out of these two. So you can either go my chemical, my old chemical romance. Um, you get a defensive alliance with the mil with the Western provinces. I wonder what would happen if we've already, because when we do the science run that we're going to do after this, I'm going to already have a military alliance with him. So I hope this doesn't like weirdly convert you from a military alliance back to a defensive alliance. Hopefully not. Um, if you want to take Cathay yourself, yeah, but if you want to, uh, I suppose, actually, yeah, that's a good point. If you want to immediately declare war on him because he does border you. So if you want to, you like take advantage of the Blitzkrieg kind of thing to just immediately rush him. But I feel like even if you did, like kind of still want that 500 essays though. But yeah, later on, the 500 essays is not that big of a deal. But at this point, 500 essays is pretty good. Uh, but yeah, otherwise we do return to land. We get, so if, so this is the, this is the option that we were trying to explore at the moment. Because a lot of people don't like the Cathay start, I realized. Um, and but I don't know. I think once you try it and you realize how cool it is, it's and you're not. It's it's not just. It's just a mission that you do at the start. Like if you want to play in the Empire, you totally still can play in the Empire. It's just you basically just have a little mission to do for eight turns, and then you go back to start the Empire. But yeah, you get twenty five thousand gold, so you get a big boost to make up for the you know a few lost turns. Um, transport all of your forces and heroes to the Empire, so we're just gonna instantly teleport over there. But all Cathayan regions are gifted back to the Western Province and we get this buff for 10 turns so population surplus for one newly captured settlement so every time you capture a settlement they're gonna it's gonna already have an extra one population surplus that's actually cool because um like i don't know i'm not sure exactly how that works but if you have a four if you have a four region province and like you take and one and they have a tier four capital then you could take one of the minor settlements plus one population for your new province take a second settlement plus two population take a third settlement plus three population and then take the fourth settlement which is a tier four building knocks it down to tier three gives you another population so you got four population immediately put it back up to tier four so no one's going to be tier four on, tier, on turn eight obviously but i know i just thought that was interesting especially if you want to like, because that's the thing, we're going to we're gonna hold this off until whenever we're ready. So potentially you could just sa keep succeeding these guys and then do this um, later on, you know. We could, like, wait till turn 50 when we've got, like, you know, five, sta five full stacks of wizards and then just teleport back to the Empire and just, like, let's rock. So that'd be pretty cool. Um, immune to diplomatic tech penalties from trespassing in Empire regions. So you can just move your armies around freely. You're immune to regionless attrition. So it doesn't mean you're still like a horde. You don't need to have settlements anymore. Um, none of your armies cost any upkeep. So you're instantly getting like, you know, 2,500 gold per turn or whatever instead of losing money. So that's another good thing too. You might want to, you might want to try and leverage that to um, just before you do it, just build as many armies as you can. Because if, like, just say you're you're like, just say we're almost breaking even here with minus one thousand, then I quickly recruit like everything I possibly can in every region that I possibly can, and I put my upkeep up to like minus fifteen thousand. Then we pop this, and we got ten turns with no upkeep. 10 turns where we can we, we can use the power of that extra fifteen thousand gold worth of army to just wreck everything, you know. Um, 
plus 30% campaign movement range, so all your armies are zooming around the map, and construction time minus 50% for all new buildings that you take over. Um, another thing about this is that you land right next to Altdorf. So if you want to play Evil Gelt, you can just come back and just instantly nuke Altdorf and take out Karls Franz and just replace him as the Empire, as the Emperor. Is the AI more aggressive now? I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, um, I, I, yeah, I played up to about turn 20, turn 17 or something yet last night. I, I don't know. I didn't really notice um, whether it was more or less aggressive. It seemed, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah. So you teleport back and yeah, you just pop out right next to Altdorf. Um, you don't have any movement or anything. Um, so these guys had some movement left, but their movement got removed after the, um, after the teleport. <clears throat> yeah the only thing that was i found a bit annoying was that on turn eight there's like no enemies immediately near but like i kind of would like to take advantage of the um take advantage of the the buffs and everything to just like immediately start blitzing on something but um but yeah there's nothing to really go for I'm worried with Gelt's new start position that Carl and Elspeth can't confederate him. Oh, I'm I'm about to confederate him in my campaign on turn 17 or something. No, I'm not like I'm not right just about to, but I'm I'm working towards it. It's pretty easy because all you have to do is wait till a caravan from Cathay comes from Western provinces, which is usually somewhere between turn 10 and 20. That gives you vision on um on um Xiaoming. Xiaoming is in an alliance with Carl Franz, so you just can like uh and he'll be and Xiaoming will be like at war with somebody else so you can just like declare war on his enemies and then peace out with them and then declare war on Gelt through that then peace out with Gelt and then use your um, empire machinations like your decrees to make Gelt love you even though you just declared war on him so I've I'm at, where I'm at up to now I just declared war on Gelt and then I used my decrees to make him plus 100 relations um, so he'll gonna, he's going to peace out with me in a couple of turns and then I can confederate him so yeah um, it might not be Receive. like easy but Receive. yeah uh, I am ready. Are you the Empire? The nation calls to strengthen the Empire. So yeah, so we could go down and take over the Vampire Lands, or I feel like what you're meant to do is just take I your like sense. super Gelt army and just go and um go and wreck um just go and wreck vampire the vampires straight away and take over Drakenhof. You don't really want to take over Wissenland and Solent anymore because that belongs to Elspeth now. Um, I mean, you could, but then, but that would stop her from expanding. So you'd, your ally would be kind of weakened. I feel like. So yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. I wonder if she's already got it by now. My will is bound. Oh, is it only? It's only our armies that get the thirty percent extra movement. So I guess this scouting is no good. Balthazar starts in Cathay, in the Burning Wind Nomads land, uh, north of Gorst. Yeah, I could take Murrenberg. I don't really like Murrenberg that much though, because it feels like, I don't know, it feels exposed to, it feels exposed to um, Bellacor and stuff. So that's how far our army can move. Yeah, heroes sort of can't move as far. That's all right, though. Well, right, I'll just send a scout down here so we can see how far. Yeah, I reckon she's going to already have taken everything over here. So we don't get any diplomatic penalties. We can just cruise around. We've got no upkeep, so our upkeep's fine. Can't recruit anything, obviously. Um, and we can't summon any wizards as well, which is the worst part, because you need a settlement to summon wizards. Um, sometimes this settlement here is like not. I will marshal the band. Move! Oh, here we go. Yeah, that'll be really the closest settlement. That that and that's that's quite often a ruin. Um, so maybe you rush this, take that, and then you can start pumping out wizards out of that. Multiplayer co-op with um, Zao and um, and Gelt would be cool, yeah. Yeah, I'd say Gelt is way, way stronger than Franz now. 
But it's hard to say, like, Franz's new decrees and stuff are pretty cool. I'm gonna restart in a second. I'm just, um, we're just checking out. We're just even seeing what we've got to work with, basically. Not in my name. It's so early, like, Vlad hasn't even expanded out of the vampire lands yet. So this is like a, yeah, perfect time to get in and wreck him up. The Empire. Yeah, so we take over a settlement. What does the and yeah, so we already got one growth there ready to go straight away. It's pretty cool. And oh, wait, that's weird. It resettled already as a hamlet. Shouldn't it have resettled as a ruin? And then it takes like three turns to build it into a hamlet. His Imperial Authority uh, gone. Um, I think he gets his Imperial Authority mechanic back once he occupies a, se a settlement that's within the um within the uh, empire just don't feel that all mage armies will be that great early on um yeah possibly not basically what i we can see what i've done i like at first i just recruited as much as i recruited as much infantry as i could and i recruited as many uh, mages as i could at the same time until i got to a 20 stack um and but i think yeah once you get to this point you just start slowly replacing your units with more and more mages and it still keeps working. That's what I found anyway. Um, we'll probably find out that some um, ATX politics, this isn't like a real stream. This is just kind of like, a, I'm just investigating some stuff. I'm probably gonna play dwarfs tonight. I'm just, um, I just got a couple hours free and I was gonna do some sciencing by myself, but I thought like I may as well sh get you guys in here as well. You might give me some, um, give me some ideas. This is legendary difficulty, yeah, Nick. Except for one difference between this legendary and your legendary is that um, on your legendary, it's legendary is Iron Man, right? You can't save it or anything. On the new settings, they've changed it now. So by default, um, by default, by default, um, when you load up a legendary campaign, it's got incremental auto saves once every five turns. So um, if you want to play proper Iron Man, proper legendary, you got to you got to manually turn on Iron Man mode. And that makes it so that it'll um, it'll automatically save. I think that's just the same as the old legendary save method, you know. Oh. Oh, yeah, because I was testing stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, that's weird. Was I playing my whole campaign like that? But yeah, no, I was playing. I was I had it on easy so I could test stuff, yeah. Yeah, so if you, we'll, we'll probably use that later on as well. So if you want to, like, fight a battle, like, when I'm testing stuff, if I'm, like, if it's, like, an easy battle, but I don't want to actually have to fight the battle, like, you know how, well, you know when you have an easy battle, but then you auto-resolve it and you take, like, 50% casualties and you're like, oh, fuck, oh, you know? Like, so, yeah, basically what I do is, like, if it's an easy battle, but I know that the auto-resolve is going to screw me, but I know that I could, like, you know, easily take, like, zero damage if I fought it manually, I'll just put it on easy battle difficulty, and then when you auto-resolve, you'll get, like, zero casualties, basically, you know, really low casualties, and then, but then if it's, like, a battle where I need to find out whether I can actually do it, then I can just put it back up again you know or if i want to or if i want to know like like just say i was doing a guide and i and i was i was saying like you go here you fight this battle as long as you do it well you'll be you know be fine or whatever then you know i might put that on easy for that but then i go to another battle and be like oh you can just auto resolve this one then i would put it back onto normal so that you can um put it back onto normal difficulty so that when you auto resolve you get the, the legit the legit um the legit um blah 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 casualties what? Step to it. Mm, i wanted to just take over a settlement in um yeah yeah i'm not trying to put it on i'm not trying to put it back up not just this isn't the we're going to start a new campaign in a second this is just you kind of trying to figure we're just trying Follow to figure stuff way. out i just wanted to take a settlement in the empire so that we could oh yeah this is cool so we're, we're cruising around in vampire lands and he we're not at war with him and we, he doesn't um we don't have diplomatic penalties for crossing his lands so yeah so basically what we're doing in the stream is we're trying to figure out a way where we can keep the um temple of the elemental winds because that gives all of our wizards elemental mastery which makes our wizards do double damage 
Um, so we want to keep that because that's massive, right? But we also want to come back and save the Empire, obviously. We don't want to just spend the rest of our time screwing around in, um, in Cathay. You can get a legendary campaign win by playing on easy and then changing the setting just before you fulfill the victory conditions. Oh, really? Nice. I don't even care about that stuff, though. But I'm sure that'll help other people. That's actually, that's a really good thing to help other people, yeah. Because a lot of people are like, oh, I need to know what faction's the easiest to do, to do the, um, to do the, um, the achievement. And it's like, yeah, well, the easiest faction is just whatever faction you want. Just put it on easy. <laughs> I don't know, is that true, like, Clock Monkey? Have you actually tested that? I don't know if it'll actually let you do that, will it? So yeah, this settle, actually, oh, actually, we could probably build a barracks here and then maybe trade it. Yeah, I was surprised, I did the, um, I did the um, Gotrek and Felix quest with um, Gelt's, um, Gelt's mage army. And um, yeah, it was pretty easy. And also, like, they didn't they didn't take much damage. I had all the mages on, on uh, I had all the mages on horseback, um, just because they happened to be on horseback at the time, I guess. And um, I might just take this settlement, actually, rather than keep it on screwing around. Oh yeah, cool. So yeah, as soon as you take a settlement within the Empire, that's when you um, you get your Imperial Authority back. And um, Imperial Authority doesn't do as much as it used to though. It just um, it just gives you a little bit of a growth buff and stuff. But yeah, so it's still sixty six as well. That's pretty much what it started at when I played as um, as Carl Franz. So it's not like you like miss out on much or anything. Oh, it does work? Okay, cool. Hmm. All right, well, I think we kind of understand what's going on now. Um, let's get back to the... Uh, let's get back to the science thing. As I hold Gaul Maraz, Empire's blessings, yes. How do I turn off incremental C? Oh, actually, I probably should leave on the incremental save, shouldn't I? Yeah, so if you want to do Iron Man mode, you have to click this. Um. Hmm. I gotta say, the incremental saves is actually pretty good for testing stuff, because then you can just, like, go back to your last save and stuff. Yeah, I think we'll do we'll do incremental saves. <clears throat> Five. I know. Let's sit, let's get ten in there. Let's get a hundred. Good. Um. And uh, yeah, we will just turn off the end game just because we don't want that to mess up with our mess up our stuff. Uh, I mean, it's not like we're going to get anywhere near the end game anyway. But yeah. Summon the. Let us begin. Um, yeah, so leave on the incremental service. So yeah, so again, if you want to play proper legendary, you need to go legendary, very hard battle difficulty, um, max max AI cheats, which you can change once you get into the game. The, oh, this here, max AI cheats, and you have to put on Iron Man mode. So it's like, there's like 10 different parts to legendary now instead of it just being one thing. Oh. Oh yeah, if anyone hasn't seen my Gelt video, I, I've pinned it in the chat, but basically that explains how all the Gelt mechanic works, how his like mage is and everything, um, mate, how his wizard stack goes and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, the thing I wanted to add on to that basically is how you get back to the Empire as fast and as powerfully as possible. That's what this stream's all about, trying to figure that out. Iron Man mode is just normal legendary. It's just for some reason now when you put it on legendary it defaults to incremental saves instead of Iron Man. You gotta actually manually change it to Iron Man if you want to play proper legendary. Might and magic are mine to command. Hmm. But I had it on um I had it on um incremental saves accidentally yesterday and it was fine. 
it is still, you know, it, well, it doesn't because as long as you don't load any saves, it, it doesn't make any difference, you know. But um, yeah, but I think I prefer to just play it on Iron Man just because good thing about Iron Man is it saves before every battle automatically. So if you get a crash, you can just reload from the from the save. Whereas with the incremental saves, it only saves at the end of the turn. So if you have a crash or something, you have to redo the entire turn, which, you know, late game, you could have fought like five battles or something. So I think that, I think that Iron Man is better for streaming. Balthazar Gelt is, tr yeah, yeah. So that's the thing I love about this. There's more, there's more of like a story. It's like, I'll read it out. So Balthazar Gelt, Supreme Patriarch of the esteemed Colleges of Magic, has traveled east, seeking opportunity to further the Empire's knowledge of the arcane. Dealing with the local Cathayan rebels will aid his fellow alchemist Xiao Ming and help ensure the exchange of arcane insights. With clever diplomacy, the expedition may yield a powerful ally for the Empire. With careful with careful diplomacy and extreme cheese and exploits, the expedition may yield a powerful ally who I will betray and use to steal all of their shit. Um, the Supreme Patriarch must further the researches of the College of Magic using its power to either establish a safe position in Cathay or further the Empire's authority at home, leading to the Golden Order to campaign victory. So uh, let's actually check out our campaign victory. So, so short campaign victory is good for Empire because you get hero plus three hero capacity. So there's three more mages for us, which is good. Um, if we get that quite late, that's going to save us a lot of essays as well. Complete 12 unique College of Magic repeatable actions or unlocks. Okay, that's easy to do. Occupy, raise, or sack 30 different settlements. Okay, that's easy to do. So we can actually unlock that pretty easy. We're gonna. This is going to be a full hero hammer kind of campaign, I, I imagine. Franz really feels like the legendary statesman that he is. Yeah, exactly. Um, for anyone who hasn't seen, I also made a video going through all of Karl Franz's rework and everything. Um, so yeah, check that out as well if you haven't seen it. Long campaign. Complete 24 unique actions. Occupy Razor. Yeah, so he's got like no requirements. All you have to do is just use your College of Magic stuff, which you would use anyway, um, and just sack settlements. There's no, like, you can do it anywhere. It doesn't matter where you go or what you do. You can, yeah. So that's really cool. He's actually got a really free sort of um, campaign. Did the Demigriff Knights get any buffs? Uh, I don't really know. I don't I don't use Demigriffs um, too much, so I don't really know what their stat line looks like. But that's um that's the stat line for normal Demigriffs, and that's the stat line for the Demigriff Halberds. Um Yeah, I don't yeah, I don't really remember what their stats were like before, so but yeah, if you've got like you got oh, it's the same thanks point, like okay. So no update. Yeah, but there's um so you can get a um what? oh well I'll leave it I'll yeah, I'll let you guys experience the DLC. So we're currently on yeah, so we're on normal. Um, that's one thing I like as well. When I change, if I change this to easy when I'm testing, when I start a new campaign, it defaults back to very hard again. This doesn't like, it never catches me out and I've accidentally play a whole campaign on easy or something like that. That's pretty cool. But the other one, I obviously had saved it after I changed it to easy because I was testing the, um, I was testing the, the mechanic for the teleport. Yes, I shall be victorious. Your All right. Orders. Get training. It I mean, should we <sighs> I'm just gonna fight this first battle just for tradition's sake. But after this first battle, we're just gonna we're just gonna use easy mode. We're gonna use easy difficulty and stuff like that to just, you know, zoom through as many try and get through it as quick as we can. Otherwise, if I fight every battle manually, it'll take like twenty times longer. And we won't find out much stuff. Went to bed and woke up and I'm still going. I'm not still going. I, I went to bed for about six hours um, in between. But, um, oh, you mean you went to bed and I was still going on the previous stream? Yeah, Gelt's place in the Empire is occupied by a, um, a vampire, a, a um, minor vampire faction. Yes. And Elspeth von, Dara, Elspeth von Draken's starting enemy. She takes them out by about turn six or something. So yeah, so by the time we get back there, Elspeth von Draken will be occupying Gelt's old start position. But like Gelt's old start position was not Gelt's territory. It was part of Wissenland. So it's like in the old patch, basically Gelt had like stolen half of Elspeth von Draken's lands. And now she just got them back basically. Like, El like Cal Balthazar Gelt is not an elect account. He doesn't have any claim to any title in Solon. Solon has been merged into Wissenland completely belongs to um belongs to Wissenland. it's nothing to do with goat we are sigma's heirs yes general 
Man, this is a pretty crap map. Such an early start. Oh, this is just a science -y stream, John. I'm just checking out some stuff. I think I'm going to probably check out dwarfs tonight when we do our proper stream. I don't know. Unless I can guess, unless I'm just too excited about Gelt that I can't resist playing Gelt. But I think it'd be good to show off some dwarf stuff. But I'm more excited about, like with the dwarfs, I'm more excited about checking out the DLC. Same with Nurgle. Whereas with Empire, I'm more excited about the rework than I am about the DLC. The skull on the left is cool. What skull? I am supreme. Hellstorm rocket factory. What's going on with the Hellstorm? Unleash. Uh, I think they just got in range. Hopefully we'll see some Hellstorming. There we go. The Geralt's army used to be yellow and brown. Oh yeah, they're yellow and purple. No, were they always yellow and... I don't know, maybe they're yeah, different. I think Geralt's color scheme looks really cool. I like how like everyone's got a unit you know, of great swords because they're like the bodyguards of the um, of the nobles. Yeah, I think his color scheme looks really nice. Although I always used to like color, um, Gelt's color scheme. I thought it was yellow and brown. Or is it Marcus Wolfhart that's yellow and brown? Formation march! What? Swordsman! The Empire endures to battle! All right, Oh, look at that charge. Two up like 40% of the health in one hit. That was brutal. Slightly hit our own guys there. getting bored I was getting bored of this battle so I was like I started reading something during the battle I was like I probably should just try to finish this off without losing too many doubt too many guys all right that wasn't too bad there's a pretty good pretty good omen for the campaign I think for the science ahead but yeah it's kind of nice having a um having a hellstone rocket battery just to start off with for the empire I saw a screenshot with Caribou Greatswords with anti-infantry and anti-large. Oh, really? 
How do they get the anti-large? Carl Franz's um, skills give him anti-infantry on top of, and I think they already have to start off with anti-infantry. Yeah, I'll check the captain kills. This the um the video that I pinned in the comments goes through all of the new sk skills for all the new heroes and the new generals and everything. If you want to check that out. Oh yeah, so the way this marking essays works, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I figured out what what it was what it gets generated by, or if I forgot. Yeah, yeah, I filled out. I think. Oh yeah, I filled out. Yeah, I figured out the uh, this the schematics one, but um. Yeah, I'm not sure um, exactly how it works it out, but it's basically like if you've got yeah, if you've got wizards in the army, then you get arcane essays from the battles, and if gelts in the army, you get thirty percent more arcane essays than you otherwise would have got. So if you take away thirty percent of that, um, which is like thirty five, then um, you know eight. We would have this is like an eighty arcane essay battle. This 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 army here, right? Um, so, yeah, I, I'm not sure where, where where you get where that 80 comes from. I don't think it's based on captives. Uh, I think I yeah, I think it's definitely not based on captives. Um, it, I guess it's based on gold value of the army, but I don't know if there's a correlation between. But if it was, there'd be a correlation between this gold value here and this. So it's like if you imagine that's not if you imagine that's not 114, it's actually 80 because we're getting plus 30% from Gelt. It's like 80-ish to 1 to 76, 73 or whatever. I guess it could be like 10 gold equals one SA, but I don't think that's right. <clears throat> Might be value killed gold. Yeah, I don't think so though, because it doesn't they don't have to be killed by the wizards. Um I checked. I checked that already. It wasn't correlated with damage done by the wizards. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so this is what I was talking about with the testing, right? So this. So you know, if I was, te um, I'm not really testing this to, for an actual start yet. But if I was testing this for a video or something, I'd be like, okay, this 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 army is gonna do like no damage to me at all. I can use my cavalry to shut down the archers so they don't get to shoot. I can use my artillery to wreck them from distance. You know, once they get close, I can use my hero to tank them while Gelt like obliterates them and the artillery. But you know, so I'd be like, right, I'm not gonna take any damage from this at all. So in order to just get through the campaign faster, I'll just skip over here, turn the battle AI difficulty down to zero. And then instead of and then instead of manually fighting it to make sure I don't take any damage, I just auto resolve it and don't take much damage. Yeah, see what I mean? So twenty eight, which is actually like twenty four or twenty two or something, doesn't really correlate with the one eighty seven. So I don't think it's I don't know I don't think it's gold value, but I don't really know. Maybe it's like a random number or something. Uh, nah, but the thing is, it does. Maybe it is gold value. I don't know because it would sort of make sense because the um, the lord is worth a lot more gold. Like any any army that you fight with a lord is worth a lot more in post battle, um, and this one doesn't have a lord and it's way less way less essays than we had in the first battle. So yeah, it kind of looks like it is actually gold based on gold value. But I don't really get what the correlation is between twenty eight and a one eight seven or twenty. Oh, well, twenty. I guess twenty and one eight seven. Oh, yeah, I guess it's about one into one to ten. Actually, yeah, I remember most of my most of my calculations were putting it at twenty to one. Twenty, twenty gold per. No, that'd be ten, wouldn't it? Ten gold per one SA. Question mark. No, I don't think that's right, but we'll keep we'll keep an eye on it. What's the gold cat best gold cataclysm spell? I, know, I like the fire one. Essays increase the more. Yeah, yeah. So this is what we know so far. 
every time you fight a battle with wizards in your army, you get plus you get essays. If Gelt's in the army, you get 30% more guess essays. Every wizard that you have in other than Gelt gives you an additional 10% essays. Plus there's a technology that you can get that gives you 10% extra essays. So if you have a full stack of 19 wizards, that's 190% increase, plus 10% from the text, so that's 200% increase, plus 30% from Gelt, that's a 230% increase. So if you have a full 19 wizard stack plus the tech, you get 330% um of the essays per battle but what we're trying to so say that part we've got we know but the part we're trying to figure out is how to determine how what the base amount of essays that you get from a battle is before you um multiply it yeah yeah so this is the turn one turn one dilemma um I believe that the best thing to do is to take this uh, demand supplies, Temple of Elemental Winds, instantly upgraded to tier two. Um, but if we wanted, to, but I guess this option here is for if you're like, oh, I'm not going to stay in Cathay, I'm just going to get home as fast as I can or whatever, um, then maybe this option, you know, 5,000 gold to help you just rush faster, that might be, you know, the way to go. Um, Welcoming people. Yeah, I don't know why you would ever choose that one. I wonder if there's a skill. Like, I assume that you get the same dilemmas no matter what. But it'd be interesting if there was actually a tree. Like, if you chose this one, you actually get a different second dilemma than if you choose this one. I don't think that's the way it is, but I haven't actually tested it. Would the diplomatic thing give you alliance faster, though? Nah, nah, not really. We can manipulate the diplomacy easily by selling him settlements, I think. or giving him money or, you know, whatever, various ways. Uh, test it then. Uh, all right, so we'll save this. And then we'll load our other test save that we did with the new start. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's... Ah, uh, no worries, Phil. <laughs> See you when you get back. <laughs> yeah, when we... Yeah, we looked... We showed that before. So when you destroy the... Um, when you destroy the settlement... When you destroy the faction at the end... Yeah. You get uh, an option to get defensive alliance when you teleport back to the empire, which we will do. So yeah, put out put on easy so we can. So yeah, so you still get um, so we still have the same legendary campaign difficulties. So the AI is still recruiting the same sort of armies. They're still making the same kind of moves on the campaign and all that. It's just that when they fight me, um, they they're dumb. Ready. Oh yeah, see here it's different. Uh, so it's eight. Oh no, it's about the same. Yeah, so it's about ten. Eight, if you remember, that's about 80, 80 to seven four seven. It's about nine nine essays per nine gold per essay. I guess. So we're just exploring a um, an alternate timeline here where we um, where we're going to take this one. So we get five thousand. Um, we get five thousand money and. Zhao will remember this, whatever that means. Oh, Apprentice Wizard on the first, first, uh, second battle. That's pretty good. Yes. Do not waste my potential. Arch Nectar. I am ready. Are you? It is time. Now. Um. I 
Oh, we need, I think it's two. No, it's uh, actually, we can get another one. So if we get, if we try and get another Amethyst Wizard, it would, um, it would cost 150 because it goes up by 50 every time you hire one. Um, but we can hire another, um, we can get a higher Celestial Wizard instead. That's still only 100. So there's only to hire different Wizards. You get uh, cheaper. Um, they start off, when you summon them, they start off with already having movement as well. So, um, yeah, we could, like, steal some technology if we wanted to. Them. What is your wish? Onwards. To make that worth it, it should be 25k. Yeah, it's sort of not really worth it, is it? Well, actually, mm, yeah, I don't know. Protector of the Uh, I guess we want the wizard ones. I don't know. I'm not really worried about the technology right now. So this is not the, this is not the one, this is not the actual run, I don't think. Oh, well, actually, I don't know. Maybe this is the run. So if we're going to actually abandon Temple, Temple of Elemental Winds, then we don't really need to bother, like, so my current thought is that we abandon Temple of Elemental Winds, we take the deal, teleport back to the Empire, then we borrow an army from, from, uh, Zhao Ming use his army to retake Temple of Elemental Winds, and then we build it up because, and then it's our, then it's our army, then it's our region. So if we're going to do that, there's no point of building it up in the first place. I may as well just build gold here. You summon me. Let us begin. Um. Oh, actually, yeah. So this is, so. What I should, what I could have maybe done is not recruited that secondary wizard. I should have recruited the celestial wizard first. Oh no, you can't because you need three hundred and seventy-five. But yeah, you can do this to get an extra, an extra um, movement, an extra turn with your army. But it's three hundred seventy-five. That's like three wizards at this point in the game, so it's really not really worth it. I'd say if you want to like power game it, you want to just recruit the maximum number of wizards like that you can every single turn. Which say is easier probably that way. It is best to move. Call Can you cheese the homecoming buff by abandoning settlements? I'm not sure what you mean, Nick at Claw. What are you sorry? Can you explain it better? Here to serve. But yeah, I like what in this run. What that's what I'm sort of testing. I'm planning to either disband. I'm, I'm planning to either. Um, disband or sell all of my regions to to um Xiaoming before i leave so that there's nothing you know so that when i do the deal i still get all the advantages but i don't lose anything because i've already sold all my territory death magic so yeah if that's what you mean then yeah i hope i hope that works because that's what i'm intending to do Oh, abandoning settlements when you go back to the Empire. Yeah, okay, yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even think about that. That's, a, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah, good idea. If you got infinite money, um, we'll see what our money situation looks like when we go there. I mean, you will have, like, no upkeep. So I thought you were talking about, the, like, cheesing the dilemma. But yeah, no, that makes sense. All right. I'm going to initiate with the other general just so we don't waste just so we don't waste um are you for the emperor brother of shaish the stars blink agreement uh I'm not sure if it's going to screw up the comet so spirit master Purge the heretics. There's no dilemma there. I think we get another dilemma once we take over Fu Hung. Then it'll say you've taken over the first province, now take over the second province or something like that. Who calls? Um, we can get another wizard. Wizard. 
Welcome to Vietnam. In, yeah, exactly. Well, it's more like welcome to China, but yeah. Oh, actually, this is kind of like Vietnam, isn't it? Oh, it's, I don't know, it's like South China. Very well, I'll move. I heard your orders. Great treasures, come to me. Yes. Heirlooms of magic, come. Trinkets won't go amiss. Yeah, so at this point, there's not really much point Sigma recruiting. Archer. There's not really much point to recruit um, recruit troops what anymore orders? because they can't keep up with Gelt anymore. Warrior of Sigma. I serve Sigma. You can't rush to your five, I don't think, but you can. Um, but you can rush the, you can, so you have, let's just say you got a four region province, Nick, it's saying like you could take over all four regions and you have one of your tier one settlements and then you abandon the tier one settlement and then next turn you occupy it again, which gives you one growth. Then it'll say it's going to take like four turns before you get to two growth, but you disband the same settlement again. Next turn you, oper or you occupy it again, you get another growth. So now you've, now you've skipped five, four turns of growth. Then it's like for, to get from two to three, it's going to say it's going to take five turns, but you abandon a settlement, take it again next turn, skip another five turns of growth. And then the next turn, you know, it's going to take eight turns to get from four, three growth to four, abandon another settlement, you know, take it again. So yeah, if that works, that'd be pretty good. Yeah, when I saw the um, when I saw the list of buffs that you got as Gelt, that my first thought was, I don't know how, but I know this is going to be very che this is going to be cheesable somehow. <laughs> so that's what we're here to figure out. Five point zero, yeah. I think five point zero comes out towards around the end of the month. But oh yeah, I've got creative assemblies given us early empire, earlier, um, earlier access. The empire. Actually, I haven't noticed whether Gelt gets any, um, Shaman, whether Gelt gets any stuff that um, helps with diplomacy. All right, so we should get another dilemma now. So we can take, so uh, the Burning Wind Nomads have been successfully pushed back across the Great Canal. Jiaming, the Iron Dragon of the Western Provinces, asks for your continued, um, the continued assistance by advancing across the waterway and dealing the final blow to the dissidents. So we can decline. He'll remember this, um, but we got 5,000 5, gold. Secured border, if that's, I guess if you're trying to settle and you want to get some more relations, but I would never take that one. And pretty much what you'd always take is arcane essays. And yeah, I'm pretty sure this is exactly the same. Um, this is exactly the same as what I got last time when I did the when I did the um, the other option. So I'll take the arcane essays because that's worth way more to us than the five thousand gold. John, <laughs> you're supposed to be a moderator. You're supposed to be supporting me. You're supposed to be helping me. You're supposed to be making my life better. Why are you just coming in here and telling me that my shit sucks and you wish it didn't exist? It's very, it's very rude. All right, so we just got a sweet 500 uh, essays, plus we got a few from taking over the settlement. Notice that the, essay, the essays we got from taking over settlements was quite low again, because there was no Lord. Um, if there was a Lord, I reckon we would have got a lot more gold value in essays. Can you recruit the new units? No, the new, you can't, if you're talking about the DLC units, no, I can't recruit the DLC what? units. All right, so we got a death one, we got a celestial one. Oh no, we got a death one and we got a life, oh, we got a death life and celestial, so we got a fire. 
ready to burn them. You summon me. Uh, metal. You just want one of each because they only cost 100 each. Get as many wizards as you can, as fast as you can. Gold, death, fire, celestial, life, beast. Oh, yes. white lights. So the reason I'm doing this is not because I particularly want these particular types of wizards, but just because they're the cheapest. Because if you once you get the second, like this one costs 100, but all these others now cost me 150. So this is just to get like the maximum of uh, maximum. Oh yeah, the gold, the gold um, wizard is new. Uh, this guy. Arcane master. Yeah, this guy's new. He looks pretty cool, doesn't he? Is actually his staff? Does his staff look a little bit kind of Cathayan to you as well? I oh, know, not really, but maybe a little bit. He looks pretty cool. He looks kind of dwarf. His mask looks kind of dwarfish as well. He's got this big beard and he's got this like kind of Iron Breaker mask on. It looks pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, I've got a link. I've got a link to my Gelt video, which goes through all of the wizard skill, the new skills for the wizards, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's just pinned in the chats if you want to check it out. Um, but uh, but yeah, basically they have this. Every all the new wizards got this new extra skill line added, so they get minus ten percent cooldown for whatever lore or magic they do, minus twenty five percent miscast. They get Lord's Counselor, which gives them the increase their hero map action um, chance. These um, they get. Plus um, five winds of magic power capacity and minus 10 law for whatever law they cast. Um, 20 armor plus 10% speed. And those are all the same for all the different mages, but um, just depending, this is specialized towards their own school of magic, obviously. And then each school has their own unique skill here. So for, for, um, for the gold wizard, it's physical resistance and an, aura, an armor aura, which is pretty cool. Hey, Moats. I have a keen eye for jewelry. Indeed, I do. Um Beast Wizard uh, Items of power come Summon Arcane Artist Summon Speed Wizard An Arcane Eagle. Eye is needed aiding the mundanes Um What if you use restore movement to rush the rebels even faster? Yeah, no, I did that on my first run. But um, the first run, but I realized it's not good to do that because you can only use the restore movement once. It's got a really long cooldown on it. Uh, yeah, it's got an eight turn cooldown on it. And also it costs 375 gold, which is if I had have used that as fast as I could, that would have slowed me down by four wizards. And, and each wizard that you've got gives you 10% more um, essays. So it would have not only slowed me down by four wizards, but it would have meant I would be getting 40% less essays in future so do you know what i mean so it would have slowed me down by even more wizards so yeah so i'd say it's a bad idea like you could you could use it to save one turn um but you would have less wizards so yeah if you want to do if you want to do a like a video about like the fastest ever doing the quest in six turns instead of eight turns or whatever then yeah you would use it but But yeah, as overall meta, I think it's not as good as just spending it on the wizards. Uh, actually, we don't need any red line in him because he's eventually going to go for full 19 wizards. So we're just going to ignore the red line completely. Um, character experience gain actually would be really nice on him. That's a lot of mages. He ain't seen nothing yet. Now, this guy's going to temporarily be our bodyguard, but we'll kick him out in order to make room for more wizards um, later on. I refuse. Yes, my lord. The nation calls. Weapon practice. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to put all of them on auto level because. Um, Otherwise, it's going to be too much leveling just for the science. Obviously, if it was real life, I would I would never do this because I want to put every one of my skills individually. But um, I think if you're going to do auto level on any campaign, then Geltz one is definitely the one that you want to do it on.
Um, I think, yeah, I think rushing the tech tree is probably a good idea. Because, um, especially this one here, extra essays earned in battle. We should have taken that already, actually. And this one we can wait on, extra uses for cataclysm spells, but that is pretty cool. Um, yeah, Winds of Magic Power Reserve per turn is pretty good as well. And wind and hero capacity for battle wizards is pretty good as well, obviously. Um, but uh, I don't know, actually. Yeah, uh, Godric and Felix stay in the game permanently. If we um, if we go quick enough, we can probably do Godric and Felix today as well. If oh no, probably not. I probably won't have time. But yeah. How are you going to win battles early with just mages? We've got we've got some troops. But, um, but, you know, we were going to do it the way mages always win battles, by just blowing the shit out of everybody. Uh, it'll, it'll all make sense, don't worry. What? Imminent Rebellion. Oh, Imminent Rebellion here. Oh, perfect. All right, cool. We'll just raise another Lord to deal with that so we don't waste any movement. Warrior of Figma. Just started blasting. That's it. Uh, I don't know. We don't really need units. Units, schmunits. Oh yeah. So I wanted to know if we can, because if we can sell him. Ah. So yes, this is a problem. We can't trade him regions, so I need to be able to, I need to be able to ideally trade him regions in order to get a military alliance with him. I suppose I will assent. We got my yeah, we got minus um, relations because of that um, because of that thing. So yeah, if we we're gonna do this properly, we would probably do not take not do the one that pisses him off in the first place. Because we don't want to, we want to get relations with him. Uh, yeah, the state, suitable climate temperate. That's the same as the empire. So he's just got the same biomes that he had before. I'm very sure. Just the same. Yeah, this is the same biomes as he had before. Empire and Cathay are the same. No, I don't think they expanded the map later. This is just the same map as it was before. You believe he didn't have jungle before, but now he does? Oh, really? Oh, okay, thanks, Choosy. I didn't know. Is it is it Choosy or is it C. Husey? Or is it Chuggersy? <laughs> anyway, yeah, thanks. Okay, so... You Izzy says that um, he didn't have jungle before. But now he does. Choosy. Ah, cool. Thanks. All right. I am ready. Are you? Where's those rebels? Oh, they're there. Okay. Audit, uh, so unfortunately, we have to waste a little bit of movement on this. So yeah, just bear in mind these battles, we're on easy battles, easy battle difficulty at the moment, just so we can breeze through the campaign. Um, but um, just, yeah, let me know if you think any of the battles are like unrealistic, that they would be easy, but do you know what I mean? Like I, the reason I put this on easy battle to simulate what would have happened if I fought this manually, which is I would have wrecked him, you know, without taking any damage. Or, you know, minimal, minimal damage. How many captives we get? 22 captives. That's 660 healing, which would do not much. No, none of that stuff does much. No, I'll take the replenishment, I guess. Hey, Super Tramp. Um, still streaming? Nah, this is just a little side side quest we're doing. I'm going to do... I'm probably going to stream dwarfs tonight at my normal time. Um, but, um... Praise be to Sigma. Yeah, we'll just... Uh, just disband this guy. That, we didn't even get enough to get a level out of that. That's bullshit. Waste my potential. Oh, crap. I should have moved all my heroes out there. I didn't realize I wasn't going to be able to make it here in one turn. I should have realized that. 
So I could have, yeah, I could have, like, um, like you were saying, I could have moved all my heroes out, and then this turn when I am not in range to attack, I could have had all my heroes steal technology and gotten like heaps of free technology. All right, so we've done one of each, so now we're going to go back and do two of each. Gold wizard. Redcon, he always has, he always had jungle. We just didn't notice because why the fuck would Gal go to the jungle? <laughs> Uh, all right, since we can't make it in one turn. Oh, actually, I shouldn't have disbanded that guy. So, yeah, so just for science, let's explore the alternate timeline where Mercy was prescient and knew exactly what to do. Hey, Captain Codpiece. Yeah, I just um, yeah, I'm just um, doing some sciencing before dinner. The the wizards do have traits, yeah. So that's one thing about this: you can't farm traits because it just auto spawns them. So we're just getting random traits on all these guys. Bad trait, bad trait, bad trait, bad trait. Eh, pretty good. Bad trait, pretty good. Bad trait, bad trait, bad trait. Oh, it's a good trait for a lord. Yeah, so we don't get to choose the traits. But what you can do, though, is once we later on build an actual wizard's college where we can actually recruit wizards normally, um, every time you recruit one of these wizards through here, it increases your wizard capacity. So we've already got eight wizard capacity. So what we can always do is later on, we can basically sack all of these wizards and then just in, like in, and just recruit 20 amber wizards with the traits that we want to make like the perfect amber wizard doom stack or something like that because you've already got the capacity that you've unlocked through this but you don't need it's not tied to yes um you know it's not tied to the actual wizards or anything Oh, it saved it after... Uh, that sucks. It saved it... Yeah, it saved it after I did the wizards. So I'd have to go back. Oh, uh, yeah, no. It displays wrong, Luca. Yeah, it's not... It wasn't right. Until you build your first building, it always displays you as having zero capacity. It does, just ignore that. As soon as you build a building, it'll say that you've got, like, um, 8 out of 8. So each time you do this, it's plus one hero capacity and instantly recruits. By the comet. The nation calls. Oh, that's interesting. So we're getting random rebels here. The first time we got we got vampires, this time we got Move. this time we got goblins. If Blackwell was here, he'd have a he'd have a field day. Still weirds you out seeing Galton Cathay? I don't know. I think it's actually really cool. I really dig it. It's like um, it's like he's on a secret mission, you know. Oh, you get so many hedge wizards, so your wind magic capacity goes pretty crazy. Sigmar lightens my steps. What? Yes, that will do. It is best to move. Here to serve. <laughs> Servant of the faith. Did we... Yeah, we got a gold wizard for 150. Gold wizard. Power 
through alchemy. What will I find? Ah, I quite make it. It shall be done. Is there a law reason for him being in Cathay? Well, it's new. It's new law that they just wrote for this game. Basically, he, um, him and the and Xiao Ming are both like high-powered mages, and basically Xiao Ming sent him a message asking him to help him to come deal with this, deal with his insurrection, and also, um, oh no, I think he went there uh, to seek knowledge or something like that. What orders by Sigma? Warrior of Sigma. It is time. But then there's no previous lore, I don't think. But I thought the story is pretty cool, though. He went there to sort of seek knowledge. Do the recruit levels also apply to the college wizards? Um, yeah, I think so. Can't remember. Which technology am I recruiting? Am I doing? 270. So, yeah, so that 270, if you calculate it back, so it's like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 110. So we're getting plus 110%. So 110 so plus 110%, so that's 210% total. So if we get 270 divided by 210 times by 100, it's 128. So this is 128 base is what we're getting. 128 from 100. And, yeah. So it's still about nine, still about nine gold per one essay. Nine, nine to ten gold per one essay. Seems to be roughly what's going on. Science is always a good time. That's it. We're doing some, uh, doing some guilt science. Mrs. Mercy is gonna is out getting me some. Um, uh, but we don't want to lose money. A quest has been issued, mighty lord. So yeah, so this is the other alternative I was thinking is you just stay in Cathay, the but then you use this quest battle to get vision on um, get vision on Empire because you get Midland I think here or whatever, and then we could just use our money and whatever to bribe Midland to like us. And then, um, and then just migrate back to the Empire via Confederation. The only problem with that is that you can't bring any of your wizards because if we disband our wizards over here, they'll just, you know, stay there. Um, they'll just respawn. Oh, actually, yeah, no. If we abandon our wizards over here, unless we um, abandon all of our settlements, they'll stay here. I get. Oh, actually, I guess we could do is you could sell, abandon all your settlements and then just keep Temple of Elemental Winds as your last one and then recruit an army here, um, disband, like dis abandon it, then disband all of your wizards. Oh no, but you need them to be, you need them to go when they come back. Yeah, no, that wouldn't work. Wizard of the Eagle. I am in ascent. Ready to serve. You summon me. Golden Sorcerer, I will lend my gifts. Awaiting orders. Now. Maybe it'd be better to keep this one as the Saxony rather than that. Ready. I just realized. Shaman, I will. Arch Lector. Death is not the end. Wizard. To me, relics. Um, yeah, so since we're outside of our replenish area. I go. Onwards. Leaving. My journey begins. Finding paths. Ah. Oh. We don't have any mounts yet because they don't rank mounts till rank seven. Once we get to rank seven, we can re we can instant replenish them all. By 
by the comet. Thanks, Sally. Mrs. Mercy got me some eye drops. So that my if my eyes get sore from streaming for too long, I can just take eye drops now. No longer have any need for sleep at all. How are you loving how are you loving this auto resolve, John? Try going into a sea lane so that you can discover Marcus. Yeah, I think it actually I was thinking that as well. The sea lane thing might be the way to go. Oh interesting. Oh, I just realized we could targets for their initiates to practice. Oh, I wonder if you could use the sea lane. Like keep the Sac City going, use the sea lane, go visit Marcus, get get diplomacy on him, kill Yuan Bo to get his trait, then take out the last settlement, and then use Yuan Bo to teleport all your armies to the Empire. I wonder if the teleport would work from um from Cathay, or if it's only your armies that are it's probably only your armies that are inside Cathay regions that would actually count. The true mark of a warrior in the modern age is eye drops and wrist supports. Yeah, that's it. I've never actually used them before. This is my first time. Fast acting eye relief. Ah, oh, well, I won't. Oh, well, I'll do it. I'm not, my, eyes, my eyes aren't actually that sore at the moment, so I'll save it for if I actually need it. Very well. I will do this. Ah, oh, bro. Why are you going to do me like that? Why? Oh man, if I had have just somehow moved better. Yeah, so, um, yeah um, Nick, I think, suggested the sea lanes thing before, but the thing is, by the time you go through the sea lanes, the, like, the sea lanes are far enough away. Like, the closest sea lane is either the one over here, which would probably take... Um, like uh, that one. Oh, I guess it only takes, it probably takes about five turns to get there. And then like five turns back, you know? So it's like, it's not very convenient. But I suppose, um, oh, actually, because you go through the sea lanes, so there'll be another two turns and then you'd have to spend two turns getting back. And then you'd have to spend another five turns coming back. So it'd be like a 14 turn round trip. You know, in 14 turns, you could almost walk to the Empire, you know? Not really, but sort of. Yeah, okay. So this guy, because he's now ranked seven, he can actually dismount. Oh, actually, we could. Um, but yeah. yeah, he can actually I dismount. And then use the cheese to heal himself by dismounting and mounting. He can rejoin the army. Of magic this guy... Come. This guy's also level 7. He can do the same thing. Moving. Trinkets won't go amiss. This guy's rank 6. We can steal technology. That way he'll be trees tell me on a horse. Oh, actually, when he got his horse mount, he instantly healed without me having to actually do anything. That's pretty good. The Empire. All right, still looking pretty good. But yeah, so we can't trade. We can't trade this region. Well, we can't trade Temple of Elemental Winds because it's our capital. Um... I wonder if I abandoned Temple of Elemental Winds and I abandoned Village of Tigermen, that would make this my capital. Then I retook El Village of Tigermen. Then maybe I'd be able to trade it. But no, nah, I wouldn't be able to trade it. Yeah. Yeah. And no, I see, I can only trade the closest region. And because it's my capital, I can't trade it. Um. So I think we're going to have to like sack. No, actually, we're kind of screwed this way as well, because even if we take that, we aren't going to be able to trade around there. So yeah, I think we need to, I think you need to sack this. 
keep this as a sack city and then not and then not um then occupy this but just keep that as a sack city because we need to somehow be able to trade the regions to Xiaoming. Or we could just give gold. Maybe we should just give gold to Xiaoming. The Lord of the Jade Swan gladly receives you. Nah, so we still can't get the defensive alliance even with that. We. Give him some love. Uh, actually, yeah, maybe I'll give him just to speed things up a bit. We'll give him a large gift. Beneficial discussion. It's not to ninety-five. That looks pretty good. It is time. Was it that? Was that? Was that wizard screwing up my movement? Will. That seems weird. No peace, just war. I guess. Go back to the Empire Land, please. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So the basically the mission is to go back to the Empire Lands, but we want to do it in such a way that we leave behind um, Zhao Ming being our military ally, or somebody being my military ally, and um, Speak your word. and then be able to use their armies to retake. Temple of the Elemental Winds immediately after we um yeah after we go. Um oh, actually I'll just save it for a second. So if we uh oh I can't take the can't do it. What brings you here? Hey, Glorious Grunt. No, skip skip one and game one and two. Just buy Warhammer three, because um, all of the three games they combine together, but they use the engine from the last game. So if you buy Warhammer one, you'll just have the old shit engine from like seven years ago or whatever. If you buy Warhammer three, you'll have the new engine. And then if you want to buy one and two later on, all the race all the races from the like. So my favorite races are probably in Warhammer one. So you know, so yeah, I'd probably buy Warhammer three first so you can try it out. And then if you like it, then get like Warhammer one and then you'll get all the five extra races that you can play and stuff like that. There's also heaps of free LC that you can get for the game as well um if you go if you register on total war access nah i'm not allowed to show any of the new stuff virus uh, apart from epidemias a powerful move you need fire i await to advise yeah 23rd is when i can show the dlc yeah um to dust who calls it is gone i am ready are you this is costing us a bit of money isn't it Wizard. Yes. Knowledge is power. Do not waste my potential. Ready. 
I am the Supreme Patriarch. Let us begin. You summon me. I got 15% extra XP now. Yeah, so I'm pretty. It's sort of confusing, like trying to buy stuff on uh, buy this, all the DLC and stuff on this game. Um, oh yeah, I um I set up my uh, affiliate link thing. Uh, it's not quite set up yet, but um, I probably will be getting set up soon in the next few days or whatever. So, for any, any of those people who have asked me about affiliate links previously, and I've said don't have one, I will eventually get one. Yeah, that's a good call, Glorious Grunt. Um, at the moment, yeah, instant gaming, yeah. Um, at the moment, um, the game's not on special. So, um, yeah, I mean, I reckon this is, like, the best game ever. So I would, like, just buy it immediately. Don't give a shit that it's not on special. Just get it anyway. But, um, but yeah, if you look around, maybe on instant gaming, you might be able to get a discount on there. And, um, yeah, I think it was heavily discounted on instant gaming, actually. I hope you haven't already bought it on Steam. Um, you can get a Steam key from instant gaming, and I think it's discounted. Let me just check. Yeah, it's 66% off right now on instant gaming. Oh, but actually, no, if that's Total Warhammer 3 for Europe. Uh, Total Warhammer 3 Standard Edition is also 66%, 64% off. So, yeah, grab it from, um, yeah, grab it from instant gaming. If anyone, yeah, if anyone wants to buy the game, I think that's a lot cheaper than Steam. And you get this, you actually get a Steam key when you do it, so you can go and then like activate the code on Steam. Um, but yeah, but once you, yeah, if there's actually a Steam sale on, then um, it's actually not bad getting it off Steam usually. But yeah, but yeah, well yeah, instant gaming is usually like the same or cheaper than Steam. So yeah, so that's why I was thinking of getting um, a um, an affiliate link for instant gaming because I do pretty much now like I've come around to pretty much just always directing people to go to instant gaming. So I figure um, they may as well pay me for pay me for it. <laughs> oh, there's a little affiliation button. Oh, is that is that already on? Oh, I think I've already got an affiliate link. I'm not sure. Yeah, that second link. That second link that I just posted. Oh, wow. I've actually already got an affiliate link. I didn't even, I don't know how it worked. So I didn't know how to do it. So yeah, I think that's I think that's my affiliate link. So if you guys, if yeah, if anyone is wanting to buy Warhammer three or whatever, then yeah, I think if you go through that, yeah, I think that counts as me having it, me getting me an affiliate link. Yeah. So yeah, anyway, so if anyone who doesn't know about affiliate links, basically it's like if you buy if you buy the game using my affiliate link, then I get like a, I get a couple of dollars or something. Uh, I think yeah, I think I get like two dollars or something like that every time someone buys. Um, oh no, it'd be like, yeah, yeah, it's like, no, yeah, yeah, it'd be about two or three dollars maybe. Um, so yeah, but I like, basically my, my theory is I wouldn't ask you to try and like do that, like, rather, like basically just get it wherever you can get it the cheapest that you can. Um, but, um, but yeah, but if you want to, you know, if you want to get it from instant gaming and you want to use my affiliate link, you can. Um, oh yeah, make sure you buy in the right region and everything, because that might not be the right region for you. Um, what region is it locked to? It doesn't. It just says standard edition. It doesn't say it's locked to a region or whatever. What are you saying, Nick at Claw? Are you talking about my link? Oh, so it's not necessarily like I'm not going to get any. Um, I'm not going to get any money. Is that what you're saying? Oh, okay. Maybe it's a different. 
Maybe it's different. Because, yeah, they said that they were going to set up a, an affiliate link thing for me. But, um... What am I checking? Partnership at the top. Yeah, I think I have negotiated a slightly better deal than that, but it might not be active yet. Anyway, whatever. I don't give a fuck. Um, I'm <laughs> like, I don't give a shit anyway. Whatever. Um, yeah. But yeah, anyway, back to my original point. Just get it wherever you can get it the cheapest. Um, but yeah, instant gaming is usually quite cheap. So I recommend instant gaming and, I, and it's a legit, you know, it's a legit key site. You're not going to get like ripped off or anything. Just make sure you buy the correct thing that you want to get though. Because if you buy the wrong product, obviously there's... Can't help you with that. So yeah, so actually sack sitting, this will be good for our ASAs as well because it's their last settlement. They're going to keep raising a new army there every turn, most probably. Um, and uh, lords seem to give you a good amount of gold and essays. So if we want to... Um, yeah, I think there's just standard edition and, and Europe edition. It's only if you get the Europe edition that it's, uh, that it's region locked, I think. If you get the standard edition, it's not, right? Or is it? I don't know. I don't know. Nick Claude just said Lamau region locked, but didn't explain what he was talking about. That is fortuitous. The nation calls. Oh, these guys have all these guys have all hit level seven, so they've got their mounts, so we can. I can horse. Force them for heals. Do not waste my potential. Preparing rites of exorcism. Let us begin. Ready to burn the rites are spoken. Aiding the mundanes. Shaman commands. Yeah, this is just an old, an old cheese. Bring forth items of power. Deathly silence. Mortal eyes need help. Art. I am the supreme patriarch. Great treasures come to me. Magic untamed. Relics come. Uh, okay, so we save it now. I'm pretty sure there were some light wizards that did have beards. Uh, I don't know. I'll hide on a second. Um, what is your wish? I will. The nation call. That is the pyramid. Yeah, so we can, so we can just sack this again first. Get some more essays. Another 200 essays. Pretty good. And we can just sit here and keep doing that forever. Um, so yeah, we basically want to probably want to get a second army um, and have this second army just sit here and keep taking this while we go and take out these vampires and then sell all the vampire regions to him in order to get relations. Um... The Lord of the Jade Swan gladly receives yeah, you. Yeah, I can't afford it.
Peak Mordheim, play out Mordheim as well? Oh, awesome. We got a trade with him already. Natural authority. The dragon blooded. Yeah, we got trade. Um Fire and Metal. Yeah, I'm not sure I can't think of any other way to make him like us more, apart from just giving him more money. Child of the Nine, may your ancestors watch over you. Windshaper, celestial ancestor. Ah, I am open to assisting your ends. So long. No, I could see three thousand. Only give me plus twenty mine. though. So I don't know if it's worth it. Um. Hmm. This is a pain in the butt. I was like, I want to, it's already turn eight. I don't like, I don't want to be sitting around here till turn 20. I want to try and figure out how to get it done quick. You know, I wonder if we would, if we did, if I just didn't do that one that gave us the negative relations at the start, if that would have let us get an, get us there, yeah. if that would have let us get a, um, that would have let us get a alliance quicker. The other thing I wanted to test out was um, if we um, the other one I wanted to test out was if we get like more or less regions, if we get different rewards Ready. when get we do the training. final dilemma. I'm pretty sure you I don't, but is the plan to stay in Cathay and be friends with the dragons? No, no. The um, for this cat for this sciency stream we're doing now, the plan is to. Um, go back to the empire because we want to play an empire campaign essentially but we want to keep this building we want to keep this settlement um oh oh we just don't occupy this first i am the supreme patriarch So they cannot steal our unity. What happens so if we don't if we just ignore this settlement and just go straight to the second settlement, the only bad thing is we can't raise a lord and we can't use our um we can't get any extra mages. Uh, yeah, do you reckon we should go for the extra 10% essays or so it's seven turns till we get extra essays or we could go nine turns till we get extra capacity and we get more wins. I feel like essays are going to pay off more in the most.
Yeah, exactly. If I'm going to bribe him with the money, I may as well just take... If I'm going to bribe him with the money to get more relations, I may as well just take the relations. I think also with the relations, they might be permanent. So that might be why they're so good. Yeah, Galt's um, campaign is going to be pretty easy for sure. But if you play, um, if you like to play. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if we. Um... Oh, actually. I was going to say, the dilemma is like teleport stuff that is in Cathay, right? Or does it, wait, does it say it teleports all your forces? Or does it say teleport all your forces that are in Cathay? Because if it's just teleport all your forces that are in Cathay, we can maybe just move into the, into the water, just move into the river and then we'll be sweet. And this might be way simpler than we thought. Dragonborn is blasphemy. To strengthen the empire to the provinces, I will marshal the men. What is your wish? I will. Flame on. Summon speed. So turn seven is probably the earliest that we could get. Uh, unless you use the, unless you use the dilemma to rush it. For the empire. Ah, it, it, it got him. It got him out of the water. It got him out of the water and brought him over. The thing is the yeah, the thing is like moving him to the teleporter like isn't really gonna help us. Yeah, it said all lords and heroes, exactly. The thing is moving him to the sea lane's not really gonna help us because like so but my, my current plan is that we just be the turn before we do it, we abandon the temple of the elemental winds. And then um Yeah, we abandon the temple of the elemental winds, and then um you know, afterwards, uh, after we teleport back to the Empire, then we come back and reoccupy the Temple of the Elemental Winds, which my current plan is to do it by borrowing an army from Xiaoming, which I think is probably the only legit thing to do. So if we could hide somebody in the, um, if we could hide somebody in the sea land, in the sea lane portal, then, like I said, it would take like 14 turns probably to do it, you know? Oh, uh, well, okay, so just say we pre, pre, pre do it. So we get the guy to go all the way over here. We actually pre-send him through the sea lane the other way first. Then we send him back through the sea lane back to here. So that's probably going to take like eight, nine turns. Then, and the whole time we're just sacking this over and over and over again. And then when he's like one turn away from coming back, then we do it. But then he's still going to get from here all the way over to here, which is like nine turns or 10 turns of movement, right? And like... I have to make sure that nobody occupies this settlement before he gets there, you know, because um, if if Zhao Ming occupies it, then I'll have to declare war on Zhao Ming, and then like you know, then I may as well have not even shall put it back, because I'm going to need heaps of armies here. And I may as well just use the diplomacy method to confederate back and start a new army over there. So that's why I think it's like not really, you know, not really much point. So what I'm trying to do is get a military alliance with Xiaomi so that I can use his armies to take the settlement. Hey, Anton, how you going, buddy? Hey, 
It's a yeah, it's a good idea kind of, but if the sea lane was like right next to it, then I think it would be alright. But um but yeah, I don't know. Oh, Thala said chick Kinguin. K-I-N-G-U-I-N. They usually have discounts. Yeah, I have I don't really use Kinguin, but I remember somebody recommending that to buy um another game on one time and it seemed legit. Why not go east and attack Gorst, recruit a new lord, and then get the event? What do you mean recruit a new lord? It teleports all it teleports all lords. So even if my lord was already in the Empire, it would teleport him to the Empire as well. We want this settlement so hard because this settlement has a landmark in it that gives us elemental mastery, which means that all of our mages do double damage with their spells. So it's pretty cool. All right. Oh, actually, you know what would be easier? Just abandon the settlements, maybe. So I could, like, occupy this one. And then do... Oh, here, this is interesting. See, I didn't I didn't take the tele Temple of Elemental Winds because I that was the first one you're supposed to take. But this is, like... Gun, it's going to give us Temple of Elemental Winds instantly upgraded to Tier 2. Is that going to upgrade the enemy settlement to Tier 2? <laughs> That's cool. I don't know what's going on with that. So, yeah. So, the minus 10 diplomatic relations. I think that might be permanent. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, because it's like he'll remember that. Yeah, that might be permanent. So, it's probably bad. So, yeah. So, actually, this one is the one we want to. We probably want to take. Yeah. The one that I discounted as being totally useless. Now... Yeah, so it didn't do anything. It didn't upgrade Telephil Elemental Winds to Tier 2, obviously, which is cool. So, okay, okay. So I think actually that's... I think that I got a better idea now. Handovers all your lands in Cathay. Yeah, it says all, it says all your lands in Cathay. Hey, Pythax. Yeah, this one's not, this isn't like a legit campaign. This is a, what I call a science campaign, a science stream. So we're just like testing stuff. So I'm playing mostly playing the game on um, easy battle difficulty. So we can just kind of rush through stuff. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to occupy the first settlement, take the dilemma for the relations. Then I'm going to move towards the second settlement and I'm going to um, abandon the first settlement. And then the second settlement will become my capital. Then I'm going to abandon that. Then the third settlement will become my capital. And then I'll retake the other two settlements. And then I'll be able to trade them. No, nah, I won't be able to trade them. Oh, I might. Actually, no, I can. Actually, yeah, that's a good call. Oh, no, fuck. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah so we got to... This is a bit convoluted. Weapon practice. Uh, it's going to cost a lot of money that we don't have as well. We could, we could abandon all of our armies and just be, and then fully cheese the battles with magic and stuff. I don't know how hard that, that might be pretty hard though. All right, let's just see if it's like, if it works first and then we can figure out if it could, if we could actually do it. Probably better to abandon after you get the dilemma for taking the second province. Uh, well, no, so I need my capital, I need my capital to not be the first settlement. So I need my, so what I'm trying to do is make this my capital. That means I can trade these two regions. So I bet, so I take this, then I abandon it and take that. Then I abandon it and I take that. Then this becomes my capital. Then I reoccupy these two settlements. Um, then I build a barracks in this settlement or whatever. And then um, when I sell this, I sell this to him, but it won't be worth fuck all. But it'll still give him 40 plus 40 relations because it's a settlement, right? And then he'll want to, and then this one will be more valuable because it's got a barracks and that one's just busted. So then I can sell this to him and I get that back. And then um, I'll have 
really good relations with him because I've done all this region trading. Yeah, yeah. And then I'll have really good relations. Then I'll be able to get an alliance with him. Um, and um, yeah, then, you know, part part one of our quests will be completed. So now we'll take the diplomatic relations. Take something from Gorst. That's over here, so we're not going to be able to get there till like turn three, probably. Be like one to there, two to there, three. Well, we maybe, maybe we'll be able to take it on turn two, but probably turn three, I'm thinking. So it's like, yeah. Oh yeah, if we take error, take Nobby Gorge. Is that just not owned by anybody, or is it owned by? It'd be Skaven. That would actually probably be easier, wouldn't it? I want to trade the settlements so that I can get relations with um, so I can get relations with um, so the whole plan is to get him to be a military ally, so that then I can steal one of his armies and get his army to reoccupy Temple of the Elemental Winds for me. Let us begin. All right, well, hmm. I am ready. Are you? Wait, I'll just say, I'll just save this one. Um, Gold Wizard, the Empire. Who calls? Death is not the end. You summon me. Uh, we kind of blow on money, aren't we? I was going to say, I could do technology steal, but we might be better off saving our cash for this particular run. Yes. Orders. Trinkets won't go amiss. It'll actually, it'd be cheaper if we... Oh, no, it won't be cheaper. It's the same price. Just so. Hey, Disruptor. Yeah. Do not waste my potential. Yeah, so we recruit a second second army here just so that we can get. How come this guy's more expensive? I feel like he's the shittest out of the three. Arch Lecter, I serve the Helden Hammer. I am the Supreme Patriarch. Music sounds kind of like um. I don't know. It's like something. I can already tell the um, head to head community will ban Gelt's faction immediately. Yeah, for sure. For I sure. Are you? Yeah, so this is the back cap method, turn two. But we could try the um by the comet. Oh, I suppose we may as well. Right, what do I? Yeah, this is like the back cap method, turn two. But if we want to try the Gorse method, Gelt, um, Gelt teleports directly to Altdorf. He's standing right next to Altdorf. So if you want to like betray Karl Franz and like to become the emperor yourself, then you're perfectly set up because your your massive wizard doom stack will land um, right on Altdorf's doorstep, and Karl Franz will probably be still over um, taking over Eilhard or something. I 
Oh, okay. Darkness said instant gaming is keys from the studios. Kingwin is gray market. Okay, so yeah, so just yeah, apparently yeah. So as I said, I I recommend instant gaming because I know it's legit and stuff. So um, Darkness just said Kingwin's maybe not that legit. So I don't know. Enter at your own risk, I guess. Hey Jacob, that's one of the changes with the new update. That so you guys you guys are still in the live game. So I'm I'm on five point zero, which is the next update that's coming out. Um, and they're, they're one of the changes is that Iron Man mode has actually been split off now. So you have the normal incremental saves, which is just saves automatically at the end of each turn. Um, but if you want to play proper legendary, you got to tick this box at the start of the campaign, Iron Man mode, but it won't let you change it to Iron Man mode during the campaign, which is, yeah, kind of annoying, but so it goes. Yeah, no, I can talk about the reworks. I can talk about everything except for the DLC units. Um... Uh, yeah, I love the reworks. Um, I, I've only really played heavily with Empire. I've played a fair bit with Dwarfs, though, and I really, I like the Dwarf update as well. I love the changes to Gotrig and Felix. Um, I was sort of... we proceed? I sort of felt like... Weapon practice? Uh, actually, we should just leave him there, shouldn't we? March! Let us move! Who calls? Disagree with that. I go where the oh, wind crap. It's cock block, cock blocking me. What? Uh, we wouldn't be able to make it there in one turn anyway. It's gonna take, it's gonna be turn, it's gonna be turn three by the time we hit it. But yeah, this is actually better. Yeah, this is actually way better. Because then we won't have to do all that back capping bullshit. We can just take this, make this our capital. Then if we can get back in time, we can take Temple of the Elemental Winds. And then we can take the next one. Then instantly, straight away, sell tele 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 Temple of the Elemental Winds and then sell the other one. And then we'll be good. We just need to make sure that we can get tele Temple of the Elemental Winds and the other two settlements before we lose um, before we lose this. Hey, Daniel Gent. Wow, fucking massive super chat. You're a legend, bro. Um, Love jamming your streams. Awesome to see Empire early. Much love from Melbourne. Keep up the good work. Oh, much love back to you from other parts of Melbourne. Uh, thanks so much, man. That is fucking so awesome. You're, you're a legend. Yeah, new quest battle to unlock them. I can show you the quest battle if you want. Yes, Graf. It's pretty cool. Um... You summon me. We could um, switch out Gelt. We could switch out Gelt for a different Lord and take it on turn two. It is best to move. Uh, or maybe not. <laughs> All right, well, that fucked that plan. Darkness calls. Damn it! That would have been a really good plan. That was a good. It was a good plan. All right, fuck it. That's that's a shit. That's no good. That's not gonna work. All right, let's go back to the back cap method. That was a really good idea, though. That's like there's no there's no stupid ideas. That's what we're looking for. Any ideas worth exploring? That was a really good idea, but it just it's not gonna work because Gorse goes there. Um. Yeah, his army's a bit too big. I wish there was. But yeah, well, it's, it's it's not just that his army's too big. It's also that we'd have to start a war with him, which means that he'd probably even if I could beat him, then when I try to rush back and take the other two settlements, he'd probably take the capital off me. But before I got there, which then would make the which would make Temple of the Elemental Winds my capital again, which is the whole fucking problem that we're trying to avoid in the first place. Sigmarite Arch Lector. Oh, actually, we don't have to back cap Village or the Tiger Men. Yeah, so I can just I can just occupy Temple of the Elemental Winds, then I can occupy Village of the Tiger Men. Then I can occupy the capital. Then I can sell him Temple of the Elemental Winds. And then I can trade him the capital for the Temple of the Elemental Winds. Oh. 
No, we need to take Village of the Tiger Men first. So yeah, so we sack this, take Village of the Tiger Men, that becomes our capital. Then we take this, then we take this, then we sell him that, then we trade him this for that. Then we can trade him, then we can keep trading him and more stuff if we need to, but that should be, that should be enough. All right, I think I'm getting somewhere now. Can Carl confederate with Gelt through the classic diplomacy? Yes. Yeah, Carl can just confederate Gelt through normal diplomacy, I'm pretty sure. You don't need to use your elect account stuff unless they're an actual elect account. Empire has been worked as a, as a whole. Sort of. Um, all of the lords now have imperial authority, um, which they didn't have before. Um, but it doesn't kick in unless you... Um, unless you um, own a settlement that's within the elect account region. So if I, like when, if I, like we just tested this before, we take the dilemma, we teleport back to the empire, take over a settlement in Drakenhof, and then we immediately get the imperial authority system pop up up the top. But it's only the imperial authority, the thing about how many settlements you own, nothing else. And like, I didn't even realize that. I think a Dash Dash picked up on it yesterday and tried to tell me about it, but I didn't understand what he was saying. But that's like so cool because the thing that I love about it is that it means that if you want to return home with Volkmar, which I certainly do, or you want to return home with Wolfheart or whatever, once you take over a settlement, then you basically buy into the whole empire thing of trying to hold the empire together. The more regions that are owned by empire, the more bonuses you get, the less that are, the more negatives you get, you know? So it's like, so it's kind of, it's like exactly how I like to play empire. Like, if I'm playing as Voltmar, I might want to play a special Crusade Voltmar where I don't go home, and then I just keep going with my Voltmar stuff. But if I go home, it automatically gives you the Empire mechanics once you get there. So it's like, I don't know, it's just fucking, yeah, um, so good. Like, I love the Empire fucking update, it's so good. Yes, my lord. Drill. Go, like, and, go drink and Felix are even more awesome though, yeah. When you take the dilemma, Zhao gets the temple. Yeah, yeah, Zhao gets the temple. But we're going to abandon the temple. So the idea, so this is all this trading here is just to get the get a military alliance with Zhao. Once we've got a military alliance with Zhao, then we're going to hopefully farm allegiance points by sacking this crap. Then we're going to abandon this on the last turn before we go, and then we're going to borrow after we go. We after we've already teleported, then we borrow one of Zhao's armies to retake Temple of the Elemental Winds. So we get all the good shit. That's the plan. No. The only thing I'm not sure about is should I You summon me. Should I act should I occupy this and then abandon it? Or should I sack it? and then occupy this and then re yeah i think actually no i probably should occupy it and then abandon it the empire we put it on easy no do not waste my potential actually yeah, i'll try occupying it and abandoning it it is time the yeah the landmark um Yeah, the landmark at the temple that we want. There's two. So there's this landmark that gives you plus relations with Cathay. Um, gives 50 growth and plus 20 diplomatic relations with Cathay. And then there's this landmark, which is the one that we want it for, which gives you Master of the Elemental Winds for all battle wizards. So that's that's the thing. Because once you have... You, if you have that, and then you have seven or eight battle wizards in an army, all your wizards do 200% damage. So it's like, it's just, you know... For, for a faction like ours, which is like completely reliant on magic damage, this is like literally doubles you know, the faction strength of the entire faction. You know, so it's like super important. Um, it's it's not, we don't need it because even without this, we'd already be completely bullshit overpowered anyway. But, but you know, we want to be double bullshit overpowered. And that's what we're doing it for. That's what we're doing all this for. For the overpoweredness. 
Yes. Gold wizard. Actually, I just realized we can actually do this next turn because... Oh, no, we're going to abandon it, though, so it won't work. But yeah, they actually start off with movement, so you can actually recruit them on the turn you want to use them if the, if, if the target is within their movement range. You don't actually have to do it the turn before like you would with a normal hero recruitment because normal hero recruitment, they don't start off with movement. Are you? Get minus 20% cost from Gelt skill line, minus 20% from tech, and 20% from UMBO to V trait for minus 60% for lower metal costs. Yeah, nice. Um, you can also get um, this one, minus 20% for lore of magic for all lore of metal spells for all armies. Maybe be minus 80%. Let us begin. Ready. Astrogoth, I think, gives you range or something. I go where the winds howl. All right. So we want to abandon this, but it's going to take two turns. Or is it? So very well. Yeah, it's going to take two turns to get to there anyway. So we'll abandon this next turn. That way we can get replenishment for a single turn at least. I am in ascent. Oh, that's what you meant by tech. Oh, yeah, cool. But six, only 60%. Yeah. Still pretty good though. Oh. Uh, All right, I think we're going to have to... How do I do this? Yeah, I don't know. I can't figure out how to do... I can't figure out how to do moderation. Otherwise, I would nuke you classic XB. Ready. Oh, did I... Wait up. Uh, update night changes make it so you can make Volkmar flagellants. Thank you, and melee. Oh yeah, yeah. Do what's yeah what's what what can you explain that in more detail, Dan? How does it make Volkmar flagellants more tankier? Empire Knights now give bonuses. Oh, you mean Empire Captains? You summon me. I will. Follow me. I am in ascent. Yes, my uh, This is a weird thing. So, yeah, sometimes... So, if you've... You see, there's a zero I movement circle. So, this guy's got no movement, right? This will bolster and, but there's like a zero movement circle that you can move without costing any movement. So, he's Onwards. taking advantage of that. And normally, Gelt would be able to do that as well. On except for... Gelt, when I moved Gelt out, he kind of like bumped into this guy and like 
popped out a bit outside of the instant the extra movement circle. So he so I can't now he can't get back in. Hey Alec. Uh it's you know. I'd like to say that I'm I'm sacrificing my health and my my um, my sanity for for your benefit, but I'm not. I'm just doing it because I love this shit. You know, this I'm just literally doing my favorite thing that I could possibly be doing. So you know, so it's no it's no hardship. Hey penguin, you need to go to moderator view sword icon at the bottom. What? Oh fuck, that seems like a hard, that seems like a lot of work. Can't I just click on something? <laughs> oh, show mod actions. Here we go. Right, now I see what you're saying. I think I did it. I did it. Thanks, Penguin. We got there. We got there in the end. Now, each Empire faction has a different mechanic that makes them all unique. Yeah, exactly. Every single fa Empire faction is unique now. That's pretty cool. How is... How is... Oh, okay, yeah. Because we were outside of, we couldn't see, we couldn't see it, so it didn't the count. Empire. He'll abandon that settlement. He'll retake it. No, to he'll. Yes, a sound plan. He'll come over Pick here. We'll recruit another lord, and he'll take it. To strengthen the empire to the provinces. That will be abandoned. Yeah, that's what we just tried before, Sam Lee, but the closest settlement um, gets taken by Gorst on turn two, so we can't we can't take it. But that, yeah, that's a really good idea. Um, yeah, we already tried that one. Um, I was going to make... I was going to make Captain Codpiece a moderator, but I can't figure out how to do it now. And block him. How do I? That no, didn't work. Ah, uh, or maybe it's in Twitch community roles manager. Oh yeah, in roles manager. Uh, I think he's not. Oh, wait, no, he's not here. Oh, here we go. All right, I'm getting there. All right, there you go, Captain Codpiece. You're now an honorary Twitch moderator. You're my head. You're my head. Uh, you're my head Mordheim moderator. You have to turn up to every Mord Mordheim stream and be the community leader. You've been. Um, you've been. Um, you've been drafted. 
All right. Um, now. So this has been abandoned. Yeah, perfect. All right. So we. The Empire. Yeah, so we take the, the we occupy the settlement the with base. this guy. And we've still this got easy battles on. So we don't take too much damage. Yeah. Oh yeah, see that we only got 25 essays? Um because he was um because Gelt wasn't in the main army. I think that's why. Reserve, but do not honor. Unless maybe it was just a really crap one. Cool, so now this is our capital. Beautiful. Then we can take this, which is going to cost us a shit ton of money. Fortunately. That's right. So we just leave that wrecked, because um, otherwise it'll take too long to fix it. Get rid of this guy. Then... Force march over here. Disband this guy. I will marshal the men. Then buy one more wizard. You need fire. You need fire. Summon speed. Let us begin. I don't think we even need magic. We'll just go straight for um, Irrepressible to get more XP for our wizards. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know, Dan, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait, what did he say? If you take the casualties captured with the main lord, the it heals the whole, it heals all the armies. They don't have to be in the main lord's army. That's what you mean. Yeah, I was just talking about the number of essays we got. I was thought maybe we got less essays because um, because of that. Those are the Tiger Men. When oh, that still counts as the fucking capital. Ah, oh, fuck. Game over, man. Game over. I don't know if you tell me when you started Mordheim. Oh yeah, I've got a, I've got a, um, a thing on my Discord that pings you when I start a stream, but you might not want to. I mean, it, that's all it does, just pings you once a day every time I start my stream. But um, it won't tell you if it's Mordheim or not, unfortunately. Yeah, this is what's coming in the next patch. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. That's right. If you take any of the core empire land, then you get you don't get all of the core. You don't get all of Car Franz's mechanics. The only thing you get is the imperial authority meter up the top. So basically, all it does is if you own if more regions are owned by empire, then you get bonuses to growth and economy. And if less regions are owned by empire, you get penalties to growth and economy, and you get penalties to how quickly your um, elect account state units free um, refresh. Um, ever like um, yeah, Gelt can use technologies here to unlock the um the different state troops so if you got like get lots of money you can get them going but i don't think we'll actually bother unlocking any of these because gelt but yeah i was when i first started playing i was thinking oh yeah i'm gonna go like heavy army heavy um i'm gonna go heavy majors but i'll maybe just take like a couple of units of knights with each arm with each army because it'd be kind of cool like we've got like a, a one regiment of knights as the escort for my like nerd majors so it's kind of like a role play role play thing but i was thinking also if you have all these majors flying around dropping bombs everywhere it'd be kind of cool to have some knights to just pin down enemy units maybe here and there or whatever but then i I realize that it's better just to have no units and just have it all mages. Well, that fucking ruined me. All right. Um, yeah, no, it's they've out. He's he's out. Uh, C. A. Cox has fucking outmaneuvered me. Uh, he's too smart for me. So yeah, fuck.
Oh, it doesn't even last. So the plus 20 relations you get with them doesn't even last. It's um, you lose. It's you get 20 plus 20 relations initially, and you lose one off at every turn. So it's like, yeah, so it was 20, then it was 19, then it was now it's, now it's 18. So yeah, it's not even going to last. No, I thought it was like, it might be like a permanent one. Continue. The iron... Heading towards 71. Timon allows it. Man, if we could somehow figure out how to trade regions. But, uh, but yeah, it's just this this um, Temple of Elemental Winds blocks it. It's sort of so how it works is if you own a region in the settlement, then you can trade any region. If you own one region in a in a province, then you can trade for any region that touches anywhere in that province. So if he owned so um, if he owned Hanyu Port, even though Hanyu Port's nowhere near it, um, he could I could trade him Temple of Elemental Winds, Elemental Winds, because his province touches Elemental Temple of Elemental Winds. But the region that you're trading for needs to actually touch the province. Like it can't be he can't own Han. Hanwu, Hanwu Port and trade for um, Fu Wong, Fu Hung, right? The like it can be it, it can be any border on the province, even if you only own one region. But the province you're trading for has to actually touch the province, you know. So yeah, so we're basically fucked because this completely blocks us. So the only way to do region trading is to conquer Shilong and Shu Shangwu, and then we can tr then we can go crazy on that direction. But the whole idea of this is to try to do it fast, so. Yeah. So I guess if we go back to the original vision. This one we would oh actually this one was no this one was crap because we got the we didn't have the positive relations. So yeah, I might do it again, but with the but take the one that gives me the um the dilemma. So you get the dilemma. First dilemma you get on turn one when you take the first settlement. Second dilemma you get on turn two, three, four. On turn four when you take the third settlement, and the third dilemma you get on turn seven when you take the last settlement. If you do it pretty fast. I am ready. Uh, yeah, so this, so yeah, so I could have taken it now, but I, um, I think I sacked it. Yeah. So yeah, so, so going at the same pace as this campaign, I could have taken it on turn seven and then be back in the empire on turn seven. But with this one, we've got the, with this one, we've got the, um, yeah, recent, recent events minus four. That's because I, I did the whole bad dilemma, like, and um, Xiaoming will remember this or whatever. So if I don't do that, then yeah. Uh, yeah, we do. We can declare war on the rebel lords of um, fucking whatever. But yeah, it doesn't, wasn't, with the, with the penalty, it wasn't enough. But maybe if we do it again and this time get the bonus, the bonus and the penalty, all I really need to do is, hmm. Maybe, hmm. How about not attacking the red guy first, like kill the first enemy and then go for Zhao? Rebel lords of fucking whatever. <laughs> These dudes here. The uh the center lords of Jin Shen is who I was referring to. Sorry. Do not waste my potential. I mean, if we wanted to get really crazy, we could um very well, I will do this. On much. We could go over here, switch out a little gelt for a different lord. By Sigma's right. How should we proceed? Weapon practice. I will marshal the band. This dope. We 
still retain our harmony. That's weird. We didn't get weirdly we didn't get the um weirdly we didn't get the dilemma this time. Did I just wipe him out? Like <laughs> what has happened? Did I just not, did I just kill him? Oh, he's got no settlements now. I just ruined I just ruined him. I just took his last settlement. <laughs> so what happens if you just kill Xiao Ming on turn one? Then I guess we don't get the dilemmas. The Empire. He'll take Han Wu, yeah. Oh! Yes, good call, Kohai. Fuck yeah, good call, good call. Yeah, so I was thinking about it wrong. I was thinking about trying to get this settlement so that we could... Um, trade regions and all that shit but yeah you're right all we need to do is get a region that's outside because it only it only trades regions that are in Cathay so all we got to do is go down here and take a non-Cathay region and then we can just leave and then we can just leave an army I mean we can just raise a new army there and go and recap it yeah yeah exactly you're a genius you're a genius, Kohai. That is fucking exactly exactly what I was looking for. That way we don't have to worry about um, trying to be super good friends with him or anything. We can just, um, yeah, we can just, yeah, just recap it. Um, okay, but that's cool, though. Um, yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so basically what we do is same sort of theory, um, and then just before we leave... We just abandon Temple of Elemental Winds. So it's not, you know, his anymore. So he doesn't get it. And then we like raise a new Lord from here. If we own Shambletown, he goes over and takes, retakes Temple of Elemental Winds. Um, hmm. They should let Gelt Ge confederate jamming. Yeah, I thought about that. Um, so my my sort of theory for the end for the long term of this was to basically just own a Temple of Elemental Winds and have Xiao Ming as my military ally and basically have Xiao Ming control all the territory surrounding me so I don't have to defend it. But that's probably pretty unreliable. Like there might be some campaigns where that works really well and Xiao's like goes gangbusters and he's super strong. But um you know, it may not be very reliable either, always like that. So maybe if we go for Kohai's strategy, it might be better to actually just um, reconquer all this shit, you know, like just um, not worry about, like not worry about having, um, keeping Jiaoming as our ally and stuff so much and having him defend us, but we actually come back, take over Telemental Wins, summon 20 fucking wizards, make a new wizard doom stack, after we've teleported Geld's Doomstack back, we make another Wizard Doomstack over here and go crazy again. Uh, we, we need to sort of... We kind of need to sell this stuff to somebody, though, so we can get money. Maybe we sell it all to the Wood Elves. Actually, yeah, we'll sell it to the Wood Elves because we can screw them over because they can't build barracks. So we can build a barracks, sell it to the Wood Elves, then it'll, they'll destroy the barracks. Then we trade it for another region that's got a barracks in it, get all their money. They'll destroy the barracks. Then we build a barracks back in the first one, and you know, blah, blah. So we could fuck over the wood elves to get all their money. And also, that way, all this land wouldn't belong to us. So that when we go back to when we go back to Empire, Gel, uh, Zhao Win wouldn't get anything. No, I already tried that, Green Mund. Yeah, it didn't work. It's it's not it's not um, all units that are in Cathay. It's all units, but it's all re it's only regions that are in Cathay. I'm just trying to work out the best way to do it. Is it going to be better to? Is it going to be better to take over all this stuff and then set up a Sac City? Set up a Sac City here, maybe. And then occupy that. 
and then oh, actually if we set up a sex city there the the um the wood elves might screw us be, having the sex city here would be ideal but yeah is it better to go and do all this first and then come back and occupy this while well, we've got once we've got the sex city set up then come back and take this um or is it better to take this because if we take this first by the time we do the dilemma we might it'll take seven or eight turns to get the dilemma done we might have lost this by then yeah guilt starts in temple of elemental winds yeah Um, Shamble Town, yes, yes, man thing. Yeah, um, I'm probably gonna have to go soon because I have to, um, um, yeah, I probably have to try to have a bit of a nap before I stream it, uh, again in a few hours. Um, hmm, I think we're definitely onto something though. What happened to the armory building? Uh, the armory building... Uh, the armory building uh, doesn't exist anymore. That's what happened to that. <laughs> so a bit, of, a bit of bad luck there, sorry. But they added the global recruitment capacity to the um, stables. So it's all good. I actually really like that for some reason. I like the idea that there's like, if there's a stables there, then there's knights and the knights are all like extra martial and warrior-like and stuff. So they so they inspire the common men and whatever and increase your recruitment and stuff. Like it kind of means that there's like a secondary reason why you would want to have a stables because I never really build stables normally. Um, but yeah, this um, global recruitment capacity from tier four stables makes it like a really powerful, you know what I mean? Like a really powerful meta building um, on top of being able to be in your stables. So it's actually pretty cool. <sighs> yeah, hey, Reeve. Yeah, no, we're not trying to take over Cathay, although taking over Cathay would be a fun one as well. Players like Evil Gelt and try to rule all of Cathay. Um, but, um... But yeah, what we're trying to do is return to the Empire as the triumphant warrior Gelt, but at the same time, um, I wonder if we can still get the Dilemma. Yes. I wonder if we can still get the Dilemma once we take Burning Out Elemental Twins. Not that it matters towards our own ultimate goal here, but... Yeah, he did take Hanyu Port. You now get heroes of tier two. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I realize we aren't going to be able to take this probably because now the armies are stacked up. To strengthen the empire. Uh, if we do it on easy, we might be alright. You can sail down the rivers in Cathay without trespassing. Oh, that's nice. Pretty funny if we still get the dilemma after we declared war on him. By the comet, this will bolster the. Alright, oh, yeah, so twenty-two. We got twenty-two essays again. Is that normal? Nah. Okay. The, the, so we broke the dilemmas because we declared war on him. He no longer wants to do a deal with us. 
Um, but yeah, um, no, thanks. Um, well, yeah, I think we made a bit of progress. I think we, we, like, obviously we went down a lot of dead ends and we didn't really achieve anything, but that's kind of how, uh, you know, that's kind of how the sciencing of Total War works. Um, you got to try stuff out and figure it out. But, um, but yeah, then we just had, uh, Kohai come in like a lightning bolt of inspiration. And, um, yeah, that's right. Yeah. We, that's what we, that's exactly what we we're looking for. So we need to take a settlement that's outside of Cathay. Um, the closest settlements would be either, um, Nobly Gorge or Shambletown. Nobly Gorge is probably a bad, bad run because, um, because he's going to take it straight away, but I don't know. I mean, yeah, maybe. Is there anywhere else? There's nowhere down here that's outside of Cathay. No. Yeah, we'd have to either, or maybe the Moor Gate could be option as well. Because we, so we basically, if we just say, assuming we get, assuming we take this on turn seven and we set up a Sac City here or here, then we'll be able to get our main army back from there. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Maybe 14 turns or 15 turns to get to one of these. Um, and then we take the deal. Then, we, then meanwhile, over here, our other army that's on the Sac City takes that. Then we teleport all of our troops, teleport back to the Empire. Then we raise a new army here. Uh, use our mechanic to summon like five wizards or whatever straight away, plus recruit with global recruitment and everything. Have a little army. That army can come back over here, retake the elemental winds. Oh, we don't even really need an army, but yeah. So he's got to get from the after it happens. He's got to get from there to there without somebody else taking it. That's the only thing. The Wood Elf Forest might not count as Cathay territory. Uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, no, nah, I reckon the, the Wood Elf Forest would count as Cathay territory because if we're going by like the way that the Empire one works, all everything that's within the Empire counts as elected count territory, including the um including the goblin places, the chaos places, the griffin wood and all that, you know? So yeah, I think it would still count. But yeah, all right, guys. Well, I think we might have to leave this sciencing for now, but, um, but, uh, but yeah, no, thanks for all your help. And um, thanks. Um, yeah. Thanks to all of the good ideas, especially Kohai. That was legendary. I think we're on, we're on the right track. It's, I mean, we still have some, you know, we still have some practical problems to solve to make it work, but I think the theory is that's, uh, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I mean, the military alliance method could still work, maybe. If we can get a military alliance by turn 9 or 10, and then if he's got an army, that we can get to borrow an army that's around here somewhere. But it's a lot of luck. Um, oh, the theory was we just take a settlement that's outside of Cathay. So if we take the Moorgate or we take Shambletown, after we do the deal, we'll lose all of our territories that are inside Cathay, but we'll get to keep this. And then we just raise a new army the next turn and come back and retake their stuff. Gorse tree won't count as Cathay. Yeah, you know, anything anything out here won't count as Cathay. It's only stuff that's in here that counts as Cathay. Um, but yeah. Anyway, guys, um, yeah, I got to go. Um, I will uh, catch you all later. Thanks so much for hanging out with me and helping me doing some science. Um, and uh, yeah, I will uh, I'll catch you all later. All right, see you guys. I'll be back on in probably about four hours or maybe two hours. I don't know. We'll see how we go. I'll be back back soon anyway. Well, probably with some um, dwarf. I'm thinking of Thorgrim, the Grudge Brewer. We'll um, check out the new Grudge mechanics and stuff. All right, catch you guys.